Welcome back YouTube, MTG Joe here. We're live on YouTube with some Pioneer ports in Explore. Uh, there's a lot of regional championships this past weekend, including the one in my own backyard, uh, Toronto, which had like 350 people. So taking some of the popular and well-performing decks, try them out on the Explorer ladder. We just tried out a sweet video if you want to check it out. It should be up on YouTube when you're seeing this. It was a one from the Japanese tournament, um, RC. It was a mono red roiling vortex, which just like absolutely dumpsters on the Explorer players decks. Um, so something like that. Um, and then we're going to be trying to convoke now. So convoke uh, got the addition of Warden of the Inner Sky. So this is a one mana one two. If it has three or more counters on it, it has flying and vigilance. You can tap three artifacts or creatures. You put a counter on it. Scry is one. Activate only as a sorcery. You incidentally also put counters on it with venerated locks it on. But kind of the core of this deck, you want to get artifacts into play. So Voldaren Aperture as well as Thraben Inspector both create an artifact. You could then Gleeful Demolition them, and then use your Convoke, either Knight Aaron of Eos or Venerated Loxodon, to effectively free cast five drops, get a whole bunch of value, chain together a whole bunch of creatures early. You can also Imidane's Recruiter. Um, late game, you can make creatures, but most of the time it's going to be a three mana 2-2 two -two that gives haste to your team. Um, got the, the Masterpiece. You got to spend all that money. Uh, this is probably one of the best cosmetic buys because it's an uncommon, but you get this sweet masterpiece art. Um, so kind of a cool thing here. You got like Chefnet Dunes in the mana base, uh, then Aganjo's. The one thing we are just discussing. So uh, against the Discover combos, we have Dranith Magistrate. So the question is, do you play something like this or Roiling Vortex uh, in terms of answering some of the threats of the format? Uh, the other kind of consideration we've just been discussing is do we want to play something like uh, Forge Devils over something like End the Festivities? So Forge Devils is good against the more aggressive decks, um, like Elves and stuff like that, um, like Mono Green, stuff of that nature, like the more aggressive slanted decks. We could play Get Lost. Uh, there's a, and the, like the Rest in Peace, obviously, for... So let's maybe try, let's go down to two and we'll play two devils and we'll try it like that. The pioneer meta and the um, explorer meta is slightly different, but we'll give this one a go. Let's convoke, convoke. Let's go aggro style. So we're here live on YouTube. I'm off this week, so I want to do some live content. If you normally tune in for our metagame breakdowns, they will be back tomorrow. I will record them tomorrow morning, get them up on the YouTube, and we'll get those all together. But I had an itch yesterday. I was playing some magic. I was just kind of off. I was kind of bored of magic for a bit. I got Spider-Man for PS5, and that's been the video game of choice. And then I was playing. I did like four. Like, I'm trying to get playing points as opposed to ladder now. I was enjoying that a lot more, but kind of scratched that itch. Saw all these RCs, got really excited. There's cards I want to try out for the decks that I have. Um, I built Boros Pia in Pioneer. I've been building it for a while. I know it's not like top tier anymore, but I really like the play style of that deck. And then I have the Gruel Vehicles, and they got a bunch of new cards to try out. So that's something we're going to try out after this as well. All right, Narek. So, no companion. I think we keep. I know it's one land, so it's a bit sketch, but. Merfolk. If we get a land, this hand goes hard. Okay, so, I'm going to go with Thraben here. The reason being, Thraben, if we hit a land, then I can convoke the Loxodon with the white that it produces. Good start from opponent. Perfect. So I'm going to go white here. So we're going to go Gleeful Demolition. And then I'm going to go Warden here. And then I'm going to Convoke here. Okay, so this is turn two. I have 14 power on the board. 
Hey Al, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. Okay, so that's actually pretty good. So they get to tide bind that, but I actually don't care. Um, one. How do we want to do this? One, two, three, four. Five. All right, I think we kind of got them there. Um, so this matchup, get lost, running volley's good. This is a little iffy because they have a lot of lords in their deck, so I probably don't want it. Um, like giant killer is probably better, all things considered. So the Thalias could come out. They're not really going to do too much in terms of taxing. We need one more cut, probably just Ornithopter. It's probably the weakest of any of the effects. All right, ten sweet. Yeah, like, sometimes you're just like, oops, I win. So, like, Forge Devil would be good right here, but they had a 50-50 chance, almost, of it just getting out of pace. Um, this hand's very good. Uh, so this is the Flash Lord, so we're not going to block here. Um. I could force them to sack two, which I think is worth it. So they could sack, sack to counter the gleeful. They don't. Okay, this is turn two. <laughs> Opponent, that's a cool one mana two two or two mana one one. So how do I want to do this turn? I think we attack like that. I want to take the Lord off the table here. So they can fizzle this, but obviously it would have been better for Volley because I could have gone Resolute here too. A land's actually not terrible. So they could have Collected Company here. Could also just have a Lord. The Deep Root. bad uh, 
Oh, so it loses all abilities while it's still on the battlefield. So I could try to do this. They have something up that makes a deep root, because if they flash in the thing, it's worse. But I thought this was just stifle, but it's permanent. Let them do this. They'll tap blocks it on here. I think we just push the damage at this point. Like they're running out of time. So they can attack with one. Ah, uh, that makes it a bit better. Uh no blocks. Imidane's recruiter. Oh, Get wrecked! Get wrecked! Easy peasy. Alright, turn 2, 14 power wins most games, turns out. Pretty uh, solid game plan. Ready. Yeah, it's like completely replaced Bushwhacker in these lists too. Alright, find me another victim. Been doing pretty well today. Four one across games so far. Play first. No dice. All right, this hand's better. Um, I think we put Thalia back. We're gonna keep six. It's an interesting hand, because like Imidane obviously has a lot of utility. And we can try to just draw naturally another land. Like we have plays if not, so maybe we put the line back, get a little greedy here. I say that, I also don't know how many lines this deck plays. 1921, so maybe keeping the no line there is a little greedy. Oh no, Imidane. Get rid of Thalia there. Last turn. Probably Rakdos. Could be Mono Black Waste Knot. Kind of prefer it to be Rakdos, I think, because the Waste Knot deck plays Meat Hook Massacre. Yeah. gonna get rid of warden here i don't want to go all in on a card like that so 
So we take the turn off, but I establish a four power creature, which is good. It's uh, it's not fatal pushable. And then this lets me set up for another big turn. We hit a land, we maybe hold off, play this out, play this at flash speed, and then recruit her the following turn. Rakdos is a lot of one for ones. Uh, the nice thing too, this deck, how you kind of set up, like odd will hit a lot of your things, but it doesn't hit your tokens when you do something like Extinction Event, which is generally the the tool they use. So we're going to try for the Imidane. I obviously could have pushed more damage through. Was it lethal? They block the 5. They take 8, 10. Yeah. No, no spins. No spins. Okay, so they do take Imidane here. I left this in hand on the off chance they wanted to hit that, but... Um... I think we just go face here. The question is like, actually with these I can tap to put a counter on it. They can't crew Bankbuster, they can take a chump here. But yeah, there's just too much damage coming through. Rakdos, Rakdos, Rakdos. Um, wedding announcements. Probably the get lost. Uh, do I want Redain? Don't think I want Redain. Ornithopter seems like the worst. Anders, I appreciate any um, sideboard tips if you're still around. My thought is get rid of the Ornithopter because it's the weakest in the matchup. And then I'm thinking trim on two Wardens. Just getting rid of like the, the weaker cards. Thalia, I'm assuming, is okay in this matchup. Maybe trim a Thalia. I don't think Redain is where you want to be. Like the shield side doesn't seem great. Forge Devil doesn't seem great. Maybe just play the other Warden. Play it like that. Giant Killer gets her a Shield Druid. Still keeps a good amount of one drops. Uh, and then you have the Wedding Announcements for more grind. Imidanes. Kind of mixed into there. I think we go here. So that's my thoughts. Let me know. Oh. So cut four, five, add in five. Ship it. Get lost might be wrong, but I feel like we don't beat a shieldred. That uh, well, maybe we do. Maybe we don't play get lost. This hand doesn't do anything, and also doesn't do much. But I think we keep. One drop artifact. One drop artifact. One drop artifact maker. The companion's a free card. So companion is basically a 8 mana 5-5 five five if you need it. It's just having access to the card. This is a very, very slow start for us. Okay, got a little better. Got a little better. So we our choice is here. I could Thraben and go Night Aaron. I could go Thalia. Thalia by gets out a removal spell, most likely. 
Let's try that. Thanks, Thomas. Appreciate you swinging by. So this, yeah. So that takes their whole turn. It takes them off Fable, at least. Um, so I have the red there anyway. So let's make a white. We'll gleeful here. Are you kidding? <sighs> You're killing me. Killing me. Shelly. Imidane's attacking for a bunch. Just pass the turn here. Don't love it. Would have loved to hit this like last turn. That's four to do, so I can't even activate that just yet. Bank trank. So they could gain two life, they can crew it. Why do you still have Croxian against us? I think we just do this. We're probably dead here, but... Our target artifacts... No artifacts. You're an artifact. That's frustrating. We'd be like if this was Loxodon, even then, just these being a higher power would have come in handy. Get lost off the top, we're in a good spot. Could just go Bone Crusher here, come up the board. Trespasser. I think we're just dead. Next game. Give it one more turn. See how that plays out. Because the problem is they, they have access to three life they can gain off this blood token cycle. Like, I think it's wrong keeping Croxa in against this deck. Croxa is more of a mid-range threat. I mostly want to see if they have access to Meat Hook or to Extinction Event. Smith. We also did a lot of damage to ourselves with our lions. So if I do this, they get plus one one. It's not enough. But do I want them to know that we have wedding announcements? I'm going to forego letting him know that we have the wedding announcement. I also don't want to up activate ChefNet doing, so it's not something that's on, like, to their awareness. Okay. 
I actually think Thalia is probably a trap. Like, it, they have so many creatures that it's probably not good. So let's just run it like that. So you've been having success. Most people are on just the um, geologist combo, not the Quintarius. Yeah, Shieldra could just go away. I'm going to mulligan this hand. It doesn't do enough. Yeah, this hand's pretty good. Obviously not like super, super explosive, but... I can lock Zidane on turn three. That other hand, it was too reactive, I think. I can loot away one of these lines if needed later. That's not too bad. My end step, I'll loot away the land. And then I still have access to the land if we draw a Gleeful Demolition. But, so they can use the Harvester to kill something. They could potentially Harvester with Stomp to deal with Venerated Loxodon. They might just like hard cast a 3 Toughness creature here. Uh, that's a draw. I'm going to hold this in hand. It's two haste creatures. Yeah, fatal push. Stomp. I guess this line's pretty bad if they have Extinction Event, but I don't think we're... No Extinction Event. No! I still think that's the right line. We push through a bunch of damage. Because now they need two removal spells or another extinction event. And I mean, if they're using two removal spells on my one drops, I'm pretty happy. Okay, come on, I need one damage. Come on. There's like no haste. In uh, I guess Imidane's is haste. Ah. Now we lost. Why'd it have to be shielded? Guess we're still okay, but... In a lot of life there. Yeah, I just flooded here. Boo! That sucks. Especially when you get them to one. They needed like multiple pieces there.
I just... Like, they're going to say, oh, it dies to removal. But the type of deck we're playing doesn't want to overload on removal. And it just, it rewards them for basic game action. I, I don't love cards that punish for basic game actions or reward for basic game actions. Like, you... You really, it's the same with Bowmaster. Bowmaster punished you for just taking, like, card draw, which is something you inherently want to do. Um, but with something like that, it's just like, okay. Honestly, even if it was just a Punisher effect on your opponent, it's fine. The fact that it's a 4-5, so we can't attack into it. Um... Honestly, haven't seen a Spirits list in forever. The problem is with Cavern, it's... You have to be mindful of how much you dilute, because the Spirits list still plays a lot of non-creature spells. Uh, specifically, like, non-Spirit spells. So it's something you just have to be mindful of. The first... bit slow but i think we try it's kind of what i want to see with this deck is how it feels um when you don't have the nuts i think i might want vortex over draneth because like vortex would definitely be a card i bring in against rakdos It's more proactive than get lost, and it can shut off the life gain. It's like we lost to Shieldra because of the life gain, not necessarily the damage. Yeah, uh, Zori's Control is one of the best decks, and we're going to be playing into it right now. Um, so I'm just going to do this now. I don't want them to counter. Uh, I think this is the line. Sensor. In the year of our Lord, you're playing Sensor. So like Make Disappear maybe is a card you play around. I'm never going to play around Sensor. Okay, so they probably have a sweeper. Uh, so I don't want to commit more to the board now. Oh yeah, against that, it's funny, Cavern's biggest impact on the format so far has been, a, for Standard at least, not even Dinosaurs, it's the Domain Ramp deck playing 4 for Atraxa. So they're pretty much like just strict blue, green, white now, and then they get the off color from Domain, and it's just uncountable Atraxas. I know, I know, I figured they had it, potentially, but... I didn't want to commit the land because I want to be able to have Imidane here. So one thing to see, the impulse generally suggests this is Lotus Field. As such. Okay, so I could go Recruiter, make the two twos on end step, but I actually think we're going to go this. Because this forces them to have a sweeper. And if not, I can start putting pressure on them and then have Imidanes afterwards. If they do have a sweeper, this is probably just a bad matchup. 
Uh, cons is coming sometime in December. They're doing a um, master set. Now, theoretically, Delve spells should be in there. I uh, potentially fetches. Unsure if they're actually going to make what the legality of fetches will be. But it is cards that could be coming to the format. Settle the wreckage. We're going to get settled. Are we going to get settled? You do to each opponent. Okay, so they do that. I think that's fine. Sorry. Wife is texting me. Just had to check something for the dog really quick. I think they might put them on Arena, but make it so... Oh, you're a sorcery. I thought this was instant. Oh, that's so much worse. Well, that's... That's a mistake on my part. Sorry, I was not paying attention. I thought that was an instant. They probably have another Wandering Emperor here. Faithful Absence is fine. I mean, they're at six, which is good for us. Emperor can gain them some more life. The hell's White Sun's Twilight? Okay, we're all in. No sweeper. No sweeper. No sweeper. They can't block. Portable hole? The last card's Wandering Emperor they get us. Don't have it. Don't you do it. Shark Typhoon for three. Keeps him alive a turn. This is actually great because if they sweep, then they're dead. The fairy's fine.
No three mana sweepers. They're dead. Nicely done. So me not paying attention. We learned something today, chat. This is a sorcery. We want redains. Get lost. Wedding announcements. Do I want volley? Probably not. I want this for the planeswalkers, I think. So giant killer could come out. Ali is fine. Honestly, we're probably not winning a match where we're having to get lost. Just trim a warden. No. So here's the thing. Thalia taxes them, which is great, but they've shown portable hole, and I don't want to draw multiple Thalias. I think we need to be more aggressive in that stance. We know they have the White Suns. So this is another game where, like, I'd want Vortex. The thing, so sweepers are fine. There needs to be some sweepers in a format. The problem that's been happening recently is sweepers exile. So there's no counterplay to the sweepers. Things like death triggers or um, creatures that come back. Uh, things like um, razor, razor slash, bodyguard, you know, recursive elements. Things that you get value from. Those are gone. And then the fact that sunfall is also win condition. Farewell hits all your like wedding announcements or your things that you bring in for matchups other than okay, sense sick. Let's go. You know what? I screwed this up. Slight, slight thing here. I should have led with Voldera and Epiture because then I could double spell next turn. Now I can't double spell because this only produces white. Also, the card draw is a better effect. All right. I forgot this would have worked. Yeah, I'm playing kind of sloppy here. I could have convoked here, but it does play us into temporary lockdown. Phyrexian Sensor. It's a legal card. Can't cast more than one non Phyrexian spell. Okay, so now I think we want the removal. And I'm just going to take the card draw here, I think, from the wedding announcement. I'm doing this to bluff a Gancho. They don't have the double white this turn, so it's fine. And these are all like incidental. Whatever happens to them happens to them. This making tokens doesn't have a huge amount of utility. At this point. And the one good thing is if they're going to get to a point where they do have to sweep, and then that gets rid of the sensor. So then it, it's still fine for us because then I like Gleeful, I have this, I have Gleeful. There's a lot we could kind of do from there. Follow up draw. Get them so they have to 
least respect my board. If nothing else. Fully expecting an Emperor here. No Emperor. Okay. Well. I cast Thraben Inspector. I draw two cards. Well, that counts as your spell for the turn, so... I guess you get a scry here, but... If we draw a land, I'm gonna loot it. If we don't draw a land, I'll... Actually, no, I want to keep this around. Redain's not bad. I can cast Redain, tax them. If they don't have a sweeper. They're just... Uh, so they're not dead. Not dead. That case. Could just redain. The redain does tax them for another turn. It makes it so they have to have Supreme Verdict. They need land Supreme Verdict that way there. Whereas the other lines... So we'll do this. This also makes the Emperor cost all their mana. I think a flyer is reasonable. This is really slowing us down. So this is some pretty good tech out of them. I think to make the 2 2. We take it. We take it. How many games has that been of Convoke? I think that was a good showing of the Convoke deck.